Call to order at 6.32. And stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Right out into item C uh, on our agenda, which is public comment. So, as a reminder, we do uh, offer public comment both for um, those with us in person as well as virtual. We always offer in person um, attendees the opportunity to speak first. Once that's complete, we will ask anybody online who wants to comment to raise their hand, and Devin uh, will ask you to unmute and you can provide a comment at that time. Please remember we can require name and address uh, to be included uh, with your comment as well. So at this point, I will open up for public comment in person. Hi, I'm James Libby, 73 Lake Dota Drive, Unionville. Yes. How's everybody tonight? We're good, thank you. Um, I just want to bring up your attention that I received this newsletter in the mail and it said that all meetings are at five o'clock. That's effective January 1st. So okay. that, that it, it does it have the December meetings printed? Or is okay. it the well, here, so. Yeah, I apologize for that. No, no, no. Just yeah. let me know. Okay, I'm looking at the uh, enhanced organic design, DE, D services, D2. Reducing buffer by using plenum returning classrooms and upgrading all wiring to plenum rated wiring. I just want to bring to your attention P10. You might want to take a look at that PVC piping in the plenum ceiling if there's going to be any. So that's not fire rated. And uh, will the public be able to visit the site while it's under construction? I think the question is Yeah, I think you had a question. Will the public be able to visit the site during construction? So, would we be, you know, would we make a, something available perhaps? That would be a committee to say, you know, schedule for and, and uh, um, I would say, it's something that could be arranged. Yeah, and I think also uh, just in response, I think we do plan to have cameras as well um, that will be installed on site, which will be available for viewing as well. So more to come as we do more planning. Okay. Thank you. Can I submit my email somewhere? Get uh, updates. Absolutely, right on the website. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. And Kat can give you information too as well. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. That's it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I will open it up to comments virtually. Okay. Hi, Jay. Hi. Uh, hello, Jay Tolan, 39 Timberline Drive. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I, I, so I'm, I'm definitely a proponent for the thank you. So I have a non-Farmington thank you, and then definitely a Farmington thank you. My, well, during Thanksgiving, my stepson figured out the problem with my computer, so I no longer have to call into meetings. I'm actually speaking to a microphone. Kat probably heard me say that last night at town council, so sorry about that. Um, the other thank you is, and I think this is on the agenda, I did submit um, a correspondence in regards to some concerns I had about the Institute for Human-Centered Design. Um, participation, and I appreciate Kat getting that to TSKP and getting me a quick response, clarifying my concern. So I just want to say thank you for that. that. That's it, thank you. 
Thank you, Jen. Any other public comment? Uh, next order of business is correspondence item E. Uh, this is any correspondence between received between 11 27 2021 and 12 13 2021. Um, as Jay mentioned, his comment is um, his submitted comment was actually included in our agenda packet as well. So uh, that was something that has been here uh, with the committee, and that is everything that was received. Um, I always mention here again that we anybody who um, is interested in, in providing comment or questions or anything to us, please go online and use the contact form. Uh, we will always respond to those as, as fast as we can. Um, it's a good way to reach us uh, if you're looking for any additional information that you don't get from the meetings or to clarify anything. Um, and I say that not only for those who attend with us, but also those who watch uh, afterwards, whether that be uh, via Facebook or um, the, the meeting recording. So please feel free to use that uh, that form on the website as well to contact us. Okay, we're going to go right into reports. Um, very first item is the chair report. So I do have a few things to report as we kind of wrap up uh, this year. Um, believe it or not, we are at the end of 2021. Um, <laughs> so first uh, thing I do want to mention is that um, Sharon has um, actually stepped down from the committee. Uh, she did move, so that required her, unfortunately, to leave us. Um, she is, I believe, on with us um, as an attendee. Um, so Sharon, hopefully you can hear us, and I say thank you. Um, and I think I say that on behalf of the entire committee, uh, not only for your diligence, time, effort, energy, everything you put into the last uh, two years of just the committee work we've done to get um, the, the project passed and move forward, but also all the work you did on the ad hoc committee as well, which was really, really critical in getting us to where we were as far as once the, the committee was established. So we thank you very much for your, your time and service. You will be sorely missed, um, and uh, we hope you the best. Wish you well. We hope we see you um, stop in maybe sometime if you're close by. Uh, to say hello, but um, you know, we just wanted to say thank you. I don't know if you want to just say a few words, and we'll give you the opportunity. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure working with everyone, and I want to wish you the best in the project in the coming year. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Um, the other uh, order of business is uh, as we end the year and we move into a uh, new year after the election, we will see some changes to our committee that have yet to be officially announced. Um, you know, regarding both Ellen and Chris did not uh, choose to run um, this year in the last election, so that will change um, our dynamics a little bit as far as placement and uh, what our committee looks like. Um, so we'll wait for town council for that official announcement, but obviously to Ellen, who's not here tonight, unfortunately, she had another commitment. Chris, um, I know we, we have more information to come, but again, we thank you for your service to us to date and all the hard work and effort. I really do believe all of us have made this such a wonderful team and you can all have brought such unique um, capabilities uh, that it really was the key to the success. I know I'm not sure if any one of us wasn't involved, if we would have gotten where we needed to be. So, and I really do feel that way. So, thank you, thank you very much. Um, and to Ellen as well, I can say that remotely. Hopefully, we'll see her. I'm sure we'll see her soon. Um, but more to come 
town town council on that piece uh, as far as what happens with our liaison roles. That's really kind of where the where the changes will happen. Any questions on that? Yeah, are we replacement chair? Yeah, that's something I'm hoping um, Chris will give us a quick update on once we go into it. Jack, he, he's up right after me, so we'll we'll talk about that in a second. But um, I think that's all I've had. Any other questions on that? I think it kind of made sense. More to come. I don't have any, any more to share around how our our committee's going to change. But so why don't we go right into um, town council liaison report from Chris? He, he does have. Yeah, uh, in terms of the business of the council relative to the project, there was there's nothing new to report. Uh, but last night at, uh, at our meeting, we approved uh, uh, the appointment of Suraj Kurikati to this building committee. You may be familiar with Suraj. I think he recently ran for election to the Board of Education uh, successfully this past uh, November. Uh, Suraj will bring a wealth of business and engineering experience through his professional, personal experience, and educational experiences. So. Looking forward to seeing Siraj as part of this committee. Hopefully, everybody welcomes him uh, come January. Okay. So, just as a note on that, so the process, Lenny can probably speak to it the best out of all of us who have gone through it uh, the most recently. But there, there's obviously a process that needs to happen with any new member coming up. So, again, if you remember, we were all sworn in. Uh, that process still needs to happen. Um, I performed kind of an onboarding where we go through roles responsibilities overview of the project um, so I will make sure all that happens and the goal is to try to get all that ready and done well before our January 5th meeting so that it's not um, you know too much of a hardship on somebody coming in straight off yeah, yeah, um, the streets onto our committee <laughs> without any information I'm sure he is has followed it well and, and I should have this Raj lives directly next door so before January that's the easiest way. So there's some work to do, um, and we'll manage through that um, just to make sure that we can make this transition as smooth as possible. Uh, but again, we'll, I think we'll all be cautious and be aware that you know when he does join us, that we're aware, of, making sure we maybe explain some of our language a little bit more and acronyms and things like that as we move through the process is always helpful for somebody. Too. But we'll have that all occur in the new year. Okay. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. Anything else know. for Chris? Okay. Board of Education liaison report, Beth. I don't have anything further. All right. Perfect. All right. So we're going to go into um, the, the bulk of the, the presentation tonight is going to be um, in, in some upcoming reports, but owner's rep report, um, Chris and Mark. Details you want to share? Sure. Yeah. So we uh, we received a letter from the state on Friday, uh, Friday late Friday afternoon, um, which is being passed around now. Uh, so <clears throat> it's regarding um, how the project is going to be listed on the priority list. Um, the priority list is issued today. I haven't seen it yet. Um, as of five o'clock, it has formally been sent, uh, but I do expect to see it. At some point uh, tomorrow or, uh, or Friday. Um, so what this letter states is they are uh, the Office of School Construction Grants and Review is now uh, the former director Costa, who's been to several of our meetings here, who's no longer with that department. Uh, the interim director is the deputy commissioner of DAS, Noel Petra. Um, he's the one that signed this letter. Um, and it's confirming the reimbursement rates. So when we submitted the project, we submitted it with the understanding um, based on what uh, Costa's prior direction was uh, with having the main high school project at 18.93%, which they did confirm. That's a new project. That's the reimbursement rate for a new project. Um, so that's all set. What did change is the uh, reimbursement related to the 900 way. So it's now separated into the outdoor athletic facilities and central office. So you'll see the bottom of page one gets into the outdoor athletic facility. Page two uh, speaks to the second grant now as only being the central office uh, grant. So the outdoor athletic facilities is that reimbursement rate specific to that, to those costs is 
from what we were previously told was going to be the 28.93%. That is also, that area is also being added to, or I shouldn't say added, but it's being incorporated with the main high school project. So now the main grant for the high school is going to be the new high school, as well as the field house, even though the field house is located inside the 900 way. <clears throat> So that takes care of that. Now the second project that you have, the not priority list project for the Board of Ed, which we were always calling central office, is now specifically just for central office. There's, it's not going to show up on the priority list. Um, and none of the, the program, programmatic elements will be impacted by the central office grant. However, we're still going to um, the process is still going to happen in parallel. We're going to do everything together as we go through our meetings uh, with the state to get the approvals. We'll we'll tag central office onto the, the main school as we were as we were prior to this letter. Um, so that process piece is not going to change. Um, what the net effect, I should say, right of the of the reduced reimbursement rates for both the outdoor athletic facility and the Board of Ed is about $915,000. Um, so right now, uh, the legislators that represent the town of Farmington have been contacted um, and they are going to take it to that level on their end to see what they can do with that, with that deficit. They did acknowledge on the bottom of page two that there is a choice seat bonus, which is a bonus, it's not a guarantee, even though they're saying that they're granting the district's request. Um, it's, it's not necessarily a guarantee, and it is based on the number of seats when the project is completed. Um, so with that, as of, as of right now, today, um, that bonus will be enough to cover. However, we're not guaranteeing that those numbers, no one can really guarantee that those numbers aren't going to change by the time this project is completed. Um, so in our eyes, being the town, as well as us advocating, we don't feel that that's a suitable solution to cover this deficit. So that's why we're, we're taking it to the next level uh, to see what the legislators can do on their own. And, and to piggyback on Cliff, it, you know, obviously it was very upsetting for us to see this difference in the reimbursement rate. So as soon as this letter came out, we immediately contacted our legislators. I have spoken with each of them individually, gotten them up to speed. They have a copy of this. We have a game plan, and it is a top priority for us to, to do all that we can. Chris, do we know, is this a formal appeal procedure or is we just, are we going outside the normal course with, you know, trying to, you know, there's back on this. There's no real appeal. Um, they, they do acknowledge um, the last bullet on page two under the central office or the Board of Education office grant that uh, the district was given different information previously, a higher reimbursement rate. However, it goes against statute. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that too, yeah. Yeah, so there's no formal um, process for this. It's just, you just kind of take it to the, the next level is getting the legislators involved. So the priority list is what is submitted to the legislators for this coming session. Um, they're the ones that, that approve and reject uh, the projects. So the, the next course of action is just to go to them to see what they can do on their end. Your collective experiences, have you seen this process with getting the legislators involved and pushing back? Is it, is it been successful? Have you seen it in other projects? I have. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's by way of special legislation, they call it, okay. or notwithstanding language. Yeah. Um, it does happen. It doesn't always happen for every project, but we absolutely have seen it happen in the past. As we as we get further with that process, we'll we'll see. 
it's just it's just very new. This letter was just yeah. issued. Um, it's kind of what we expected, um, but they had to issue something prior to the list being uh, uh, distributed and. Maybe um, important to note that we're experiencing this with other districts. Um, experiencing the same thing, who were uh, previously given different information regarding reimbursement rates or whatever, other things. So uh, Noel had identified um, in a uh, in a conference not that long ago where he spoke to architects uh, and owners. Mm -hmm. That uh, they're working diligently through this process. They are looking for a replacement. Noel is an interim role, and they are looking for someone who can help to streamline the process. Uh, I think uh, for exactly what he said. Um, that they're he, he's swiftly looking for someone to take that role, and doesn't expect that it will be him. Uh, for very at least for that's that's the indication I have. Thoughts. That was a lot to hear mm -hmm. right now. Um, I think from a committee perspective, it's, as Pat said, not only disappointing, uh, in some respects, in respects um, unacceptable, uh, based on the conversations we've had and what we've done and the work and the effort um, around this. So as Pat mentioned, the goal here is from not only supported by the committee, but that the town is doing everything and taking every avenue possible um, to, you know, to make us whole here because of uh, and the process and the way it's handled. So I don't think I'm out of line saying that. I'm, I'm sure we all probably feel that way um, at this moment. So, um, you know, we're going to just have to keep moving forward, pushing forward, and. Um, you know, I'm sure between CSG and, and the work that the town is doing, we'll, we'll hear more and stay up to date. But we thought it was important as soon as we knew and heard everybody here should know and understand um, the impact uh, to the project overall. So, certainly inconsistent with the holiday spirit. <laughs> I know. I like, <laughs> I know. Yes. Just, I think, uh, you know, it's one of the notes we'll be working to revise the. The budgets and what's underneath the project numbers. We talked a little bit um, just most recently with the FKP. Our fee structures might have to change a little because the field house is now wrapped underneath the high school. So it'll change things a little differently. It's just a matter of which bucket goes where, right? So now the central office got smaller, the high school got bigger. Um, and so that, that's just, it's just way out of percentages. It's not going to mean anything. Uh, but then, um, for record keeping purposes. Anything else? Could you just clarify that the open choice numbers K 12 or just at the high school? Just at the high school. Right. So the number was, I think we said, in order to uh, maintain the difference, it was about 12 choice. Yeah, you'd have to have 12 choice vouchers at that time um, of the school opening when the project is when the project is complete. And so, you know, we did the math. It's just it's a little around 1.2 million or something like that. 1 million so with, with 12. Yeah. And then, you know, for every one more that you have, you know, that goes up and up. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. And then at truly access to goals. Right. But that, that goes for any grant, any school related grant. It's always the, the choice seat relative to that building. Okay. Thank you. So, looking, for, look, looking for a little silver lining is uh, the fact that it's categorized as an outdoor athletic facility. Does that mean it does not count towards the reimbursable square footage for No, it does. It does. It's, yeah. it's in there. Yeah, I know. We were thinking of enrollment. Are we still under that? Given I believe the we are. Categorization? I believe we are. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh, cool. Michael's shaking his head. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that. I don't think that is going to be an issue. 
Yeah, and just to clear up some other, I guess, information, I know, I guess, if we can have to or, or not, but um, the last meeting that uh, Costa attended when he said that it was the, the choice seat number was the difference between what it is now today to where it is when, when the project is complete is incorrect. It's the total number on the project is complete. So it's not just that question. No. Right. And like like you had said, Chris, it, it, although we were anticipating a, a choice bonus anyway, we at this time always thought of that as a bonus and not something that we would cover cover right. 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 unanticipated right. costs with. So, right. Go, going into this going into this academic year, um, the number district wide dropped, I believe, twenty students. So that's why there's there's concern that that number can't be guaranteed or shouldn't be used as a guarantee. Right. Shouldn't be used to borrow against essentially because I think the, the thinking was you've got twenty three at the high school, if you as long as you maintain twelve by the time you're here, then you know you could borrow against it's not borrow against it, but feel good about getting that in the end, right? And so am I not am I kind of saying that? Right? Yeah, it at least covers the deficit, but that's not something that's in the district's control. Right? That's students move around, move out of district. It, you know, there's many, many variables in that choice seat itself right. that the district just cannot guarantee. There was some promise that uh, or a way for the state to say no matter how many are there that year. Got X number of seats, and we're going to go buy your seats. Mm, yeah. right. That's Let's try for that. Huh? Let's try for that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I right? that. Yeah. So if there, if there was a way to do it that way. Then say, no matter how many kids happen to be filling those seats that year, this is what, yeah, this this is is what your this right. is what your bonus is going to be. Right. That you know, that would be a way. That might be a different story. story. Yeah. Because right. yeah. if it were today, the 23 seats, it's like 20 something million dollars. Yeah. Just something for. Right, that million that you would receive an additional reimbursement right. at the end of the project. It doesn't that doesn't right. come into play until uh, until the very end. But you would essentially receive that truly as bonus, right? Or programming or additional yeah. facility feature yeah. or not Correct. to make up for. Right. Right. And that that's our perspective. Is that that was always anticipated to be a bonus, and we still have a. In our eyes, a deficit on the on the nine hundred. Yeah, this potentially harms students. Or you know, it's yeah. Right. It's hard. It's harder to swallow because you know this was what was presented at referendum. That, you know, we took information, we presented at referendum, and so that's it. I think it makes it that much harder. Right. I mean, I understand the process of the statute with the statute, so I know why it has to then go shift to special legislation. But talk about hardship, right? We just talked about hardship. Yeah, for, for CBA. But not right. because we did the grant application wrong, but not because. No, correct. We, we actually submitted the grant applications the way we were we directed to of course. from in, the department. So. In order to get that right. In right. order to get that right person, right? Separate right. project That's numbers treated it differently. One is a new construction, one is a renovated, right. everything was. So will we more vulnerable to this happening after Cross has left because of the way this was broken out? Or yes. The short answer to that is yes. Yeah. <laughs> so lot to think about. Uh, more to come. Uh, but just to keep everybody for continued conversations as soon as we hear anything additional information we will certainly uh, be passing it on and we'll you know, manage that as we learn more information throughout the process the best we can do right now until we know more but i mean we are on the priority list so that's good for, <laughs> for the high school so we should say because there's always that was always something we knew was going to happen but it's nice to have that operation um, so we do have that piece. Um, unfortunately, we have this other piece that we have to manage through. So, somebody online. Yeah, oh, Michael. Yeah, do we?
I, I heard in the beginning that that um, that our legislators in town know about this. Is 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 there clarity as to whether or not they they draft or support any special legislation in this upcoming short session? It's, and, and they are willing to do that. Okay. And do we think that 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 is possible? Do they think it's possible within this? short session um and if it isn't do we still feel like i i i think we probably have enough to, if 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 it then came to the spring session like a, a june session would that would it could it be reintroduced then too i, I don't know i'm just work out frustrated. Uh, step one for us is the town um, in conjunction with Farmington Public Schools to send a letter to DIS in response to this letter. Um, okay. The legislature are also intending as a legislative delegation to send a letter to DIS in response to this letter. So that, that is gotcha. a step needed, you know, would be the, the special legislation. Thank you. Any other questions or thoughts? This time, if you did, if it does after the fact, you know, obviously, you know, you know, sometimes you kind of need to think about these things a little bit, so don't, don't uh, be afraid to do that as well. Devin, it was noted that there were two hands raised. Is there another one? Oh, no, I'm insurance and the story from before. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, all right, so we're going to go into um. Architect report. Great, thanks very much, Meg. Um, so, this past Monday, we had a meeting with the Zoning Board of Appeals. It was a public uh, meeting, so members of the public were able to participate. Uh, the purpose of our application to the Zoning Board of Appeals was to request a variance from building height uh, as, as stipulated in the uh, planning and zoning regulations for the town of Farmington. Um, what we pointed out in the public hearing and in the application was that uh, the building is the same as what was represented previously. A portion of the building uh, where the classrooms are is a three-story portion, and that's exactly what was represented from day one, uh, at least from when we were selected to proceed with the design. Uh, and I, I think, um, well, you were there, uh, Meg, you participated in the pre presentation. Kimberly Wynn from uh, School Administration participated in the presentation. And I think uh, the members of the Board of Appeals heard that. And uh, at the end, they voted to approve that variance. And again, that's only pertaining to the building height. So now we can proceed uh, to the formal application to the Planning and Zoning Commission for site plan approval. And once we go before the Planning and Zoning Commission, then all regulations of the Planning and Zoning uh, regulations for this town need to apply. And that will be scrutinized by the full Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, things like building footprint, setbacks, landscaping, parking, the dimensions of the parking and drives, and so on. Will be reviewed by the full planning and planning commission. Uh, according to the pre-construction schedule, the plan is to make that submission to planning and zoning in February. Uh, and then we expect that they will act on it by April. At least that's that's the game plan. Uh, the target in the pre-construction for the zoning board of appeals, actually we were expecting approval or action by the zoning board of appeals in January. We actually got the decision in December, which was was good. Um, planning and zoning will refer the application to various departments in town. It will be referred to town engineering. It will be referred to the fire marshal's office for their commentary. And all of that commentary will be folded into the uh, full commission's review and in their final decision. Uh, part of the regulations, there's an attachment to the regulations and Jay Tulin may be interested in this subject, still on the line, is universal design requirements. Uh, I think we reported on that fact at an earlier meeting. 
And that's why uh, retaining services like university design consultant, I think, was the right thing to do. So, um, again, stay tuned for that. That application we expect will be made in February. Uh, I know this evening ONG is going to be presenting their cost estimate. I think at the appropriate time we will be talking about uh, the value of engineering list of items that was deliberated by the subcommittee, the design subcommittee of this full committee. Uh, we had many meetings with that subcommittee. Uh, and again, a number of people participated. They see some of them here this evening. So once we get into the cost estimate where we are, we'll talk about the value engineering decisions that we came up with and we'll end up as recommendations so I'll wait for that discussion a little bit later. Thank you, Richard. Any questions for Richard about the CBA or anything like that? The group did a great job presenting. Yeah, the presentation was was really well done. It was like they answered all the questions that needed to be answered, um, and it was unanimous approval. Uh, which was excellent. I think uh, just I think it shows um, the confidence in the design, in the plan, um, and in the community as well, um, and the vote that was was made and the approval of the project overall. So it went it went really well. Great team effort. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Richard. Um, we're going to move into construction manager report. This is going to be a two report tonight. We're actually going to start with Laurel, who's going to have a discussion with us on our schedule. So this is kind of exciting for us to review. We've got big ant charts and all sorts of stuff um, for us to look at. And then, as mentioned before, once we go through schedule, we are going to have a conversation on um, our first value engineering exercise based on estimates that we've heard about previous meetings. But we'll have Laurel start. All right, so I'm just going to walk you through. I'm not going to go through every single activity, but just um, let you know that we're on schedule. And I'm just going to walk you through what this information is, and I'll be happy to answer any questions at the next building committee meeting once you have a chance to digest all the information. So what we do is we start with our milestones. These are our big ticket items that we want to keep track of just so that you kind of have an overall view as building committee members. Somebody asks you, oh, when you're starting to do something, hopefully that date is somewhere. You can see there's bidding, um, there's completion of our construction documents, when we're actually going to start work on site. So um, there's logic behind this. Things are tied together, activities are tied together. The minute that we see a slippage on something that's considered a critical activity, we will let you know. When you look at the different tasks, you're going to see green and red. Red means it's critical, means if we get any sort of delay, um, in theory, it pushes it directly pushes out the end date. So you'll see this also in our construction schedules. So we have our milestones. We also have what we track as professional services contracts. So I have the very first three are the CM, Professional Engineering Commissioning Aid. But you'll see that they're green. They're not critical to um, the overall time frame. You've got some more consultants that you're going to be hiring, so we're just kind of tracking that. You'll see some red items. That's when we're needing these reviews and these approvals as we get going through construction. Um, looking over to page two. So these are our three design phases. We've made it through schematic design, although we are doing these presentations tonight as far as the cost estimates being done. Um, Price of Ten has pretty much proceeded into design development. That's basically where we are in the design process right now. You see that there's an anticipated um, end date towards the end of February. You know, after at some point, then we roll into the construction documents. That's our last phase. And you will see that at the beginning of construction documents, I have what's called a phase one and then a phase two. That phase one is that site enabling package that I was referring to. The last couple of building committee meetings were the work that we want to do over the summer. 
state recognizes that as a separate phase, its own phase to go up to the state for approval. So we have to track everything that is involved with the state approval process separately and in conjunction with the rest of the project. So you see that there's a lot of activities on the construction documents. And then we have on page three at the beginning, we see our OSC in our all our meetings. So these are it's important to know why one want to meet with the state because they typically need time to fit us into their schedule. So this gives everybody an idea of when we plan on going up to the state. And then we're also going to be tracking any sort of state and local town approvals as we move forward through. And again, we'll let you know when there's anything that's critical and that's upcoming. And then we end with bidding an award um, towards the bottom. And then you're going to see right now, I'm only really carrying construction as a one line item. Uh, this purpose of this schedule is to get us to the start of construction. There will be a different schedule developed that will be part of our bid documents. We'll have to go up the bid. It will be much more detailed. We'll have all the activities of the construction broken down. But my task right now is just to get us to start. Um, to starting work on, on site. So that's why I have this one line at it. So again, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of activities here. You're not seeing the relationships. There's arrows and everything that's tied together. Um, just for clarity, I, I shut that all off, but know that there is logic here. Anything that's red is things that we really need to keep an eye on. And uh, I will update you pretty much. I do these monthly. Depends on how things go. We got two weeks of you know holidays and whatnot. But usually this is updated monthly. I just tell you where we are in the process. Anything that's upcoming, and keep you abreast of everything that we do. And if anybody have any questions on this? Yep. I'm uh, sorry, sir. Actually, a couple of comments just in the beginning of the meeting. Oh, that was a comment. This is a question. Same, same comment. Oh, it is? Yes. Well, I didn't know that at the time. That's okay. It's not a problem. Yeah, that's just the process that we follow. Okay, so I can't ask that. No, if you could submit, that would be great. And then we can go ahead and, and answer and give you a more complete and thorough answer in writing after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the committee or thoughts? I know again, this is the first time we're seeing it right, right. in detail. We've been talking about it a lot. We've seen it at a much higher level. Yeah. So, again, in preparation for our January 5th meeting, um, you know, take your time, kind of look through it, just get used to it. It's going to yeah. change. Yeah. Living document, right? If you don't approve this, this is just for your information. Right. We're the ones tracking it. We'll let you know when you're going to be coming up. Right, exactly. That makes sense to everybody. I'm sorry, I hate to interject. But I didn't have this information with me before I had asked, I was able to ask my question at my time. Yeah, but again, the process for us, so let's say it was, we have more than you here. We follow the process for every public meeting, whether it's this one or a town council meeting or a board event meeting, unless it's an open public meeting that calls for comment during the process, when we have public comment on the record of the agenda, right, that's so when it's allowed. So then I could just wait till the next meeting. Then. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to do it in person. Comment, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Or like I said, if you want to, we would be happy. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be No, no, no. Here, I know. I'd rather have you understand the process. Yeah, understand. That's not a problem. Okay. You know, but please feel free to submit it online. Yeah. We can submit it in writing back to you as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, right. just a Question, if I may, uh, on the SDR meeting, is that different than the SDR meeting we already had? So, I know you asked this last thing today, but I was just looking. Should we have an SDR meeting? So, for the OSCGR grant process, it would be the very top of page three. Yeah. Did we have that? We did. We did. We had a formal SDR. Yeah. Right? And uh, we had the uh, EF first report. Right, okay. so you guys were on board right, right, right. right just before that. Right. And there was an estimate, or they didn't ask for it? Uh, they didn't ask for an estimate. Oh, the, yeah. the one we were going to give them. I probably pointed it because of our estimate. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, so. And my apologies because I started thinking about it now. Yeah, all right. So this already happened, and I remember it was before they came out here yeah. last summer was on site. Correct. It was in September, right? It was right when we got hired. Right. Okay. 
we tried to schedule them at the same day, and Bob said he wanted a separate SDR meeting and a separate one. So yeah. October 20th, okay. I think. Okay. I, I, I thought I had that in here before, and I, I just got that to myself. So I'll just back that up. So to that point, well, or, I think Chris and Mark can answer this question too, just based on our previous conversations on the changes. I know Bob is consistent in our process, but do we feel we're going to need to go back and redo anything or have conversations again based on changes with the state? Just to set more up so you know. Yeah, we're, we're up there for DDR. This is very painful. Okay. <laughs> process. Yeah. So that's a good question. I think that. I don't think you're saying based on the fact that our scope of the high school and, the and, and just people are changing. I just don't want us to be there to be a gap somewhere. So as far as we know, some yeah. are constant. Uh, Michelle is still involved uh, in the discussions. Um, I think the difference might be when someone is appointed to the new director role or whatever that might be. That might be someone that's going to want to meet with every project yeah. that's in process, maybe. I, yeah, I would think yeah, but that's not gonna that's not gonna impact anything we're working with now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And for scheduling of things with uh Angela's still there. Yeah. So the only difference they all are, are no longer at OPM and they're all at EAS. They all lifted picked up all their stuff, they got the building and they moved the EAS building like within a couple of days, right? Oh uh, yesterday was the first one. Yesterday was their first day. Yeah. Okay. We we have a meeting with Bob on another project for the PCR on Tuesday. So that'll be a good test drive. Just to see now that we we'll on the other side. We'll report any strange noises that might be coming from the rear end or under okay. the hood. And let you know where. That would be good. Just to kind of keep our. our yeah, no, I think it's a great uh, thing to know that we can track for sure. Yeah. yeah, we just don't want to get caught where it's all of a sudden there's a new person involved. and. Sure, where we have we're kind of back to square one. Bob sort of got interjected and yes, yeah, right. so we don't want to go through that process. Yeah. And the other the other constant is Noel, who's the deputy commissioner, who the interim director, yeah. is also not going anywhere. So anything that happens between the time that he's taken over to the time he hands it off, still he will still be there to we're still right. all gonna be at the DAS. Right. Just as as we keep our eye on that because we just saw changes that we didn't expect, so mm -hmm. you never know. Okay, so this makes sense to everybody, at least at the first glance. I think it's going to be very, very helpful for us to kind of keep our eye on the ball on those major milestones. Well, this is hugely helpful. Thank you. Um, thank you for walking it through, and we'll keep um, so take an opportunity to review it, kind of get familiar with some of these big state milestones for the big members, and then. That'll help us to continue our conversations. Sure. I think if we wanted like, to do something where we wanted to have a meeting with is it, um, Shiraz and any other new committee members, we could, could bring that up to speed. Yeah, I think that's something we'll have to talk about is, you know, when we do um, an onboarding, there might be some of that I can handle, um, but then based on timing and other changes as well, depending on what those look like. Sure, we can help support those up. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That. Yeah, if I do ask anybody or pull anybody in, um, you know, please be aware that it would be for that purpose just to get any kind of new members up to speed on anything if there's any questions. Okay. Next that's the uh, CD estimate on the 25th of May and H2. Is that the 90%? It's um, not, a, it's not necessarily a 90%, it's a pricing set and it's a set that's going to be done on May 24th that's going to start our code review. So it's not necessarily 90, it's not an average 90%, but it is drawings are sufficient enough for the local review process to start. That's um, where somebody does a code review, an ADA review, somebody does an ADA review, that's what's going to start that process. But the drawings will continue to be developed and finished. After. Once we start the session. But they're, they're it's a pretty darn close. So, so pretty darn close and we'll have enough a month basically to adjust that we have to based on that. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's, it's also not the permit set either. There's another permit set. Correct. The state requires the local reviewers to sign off on it. 
before it comes up, but then another set goes before that. They get another bite of the apple for an action for issuing the permits. And once we they, 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 they pretty much finish those drawings, um, you'll see that I've got it's back on page one, the professional engineer review of the phase two bid documents by June 29th, you know, that's when we're going up to the state, that's when the construction documents are truly done. When we go up to the state with PCR review. A very similar conversation in a project meeting last night where the architect said this is where we're done and then this is where we're done done, done, done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> any other thoughts or questions on the schedule for right now so like <laughs> okay all right, great. Thank you, Laurel. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, so we then want to move on to the second half of our construction manager report. So, include it in your packet. This section that has this PowerPoint that you see presented in front of you in your packets under the tabs in front of you. It gets a little small up there, which is for me um, to read that. But um, what I'm going to do is just take a few minutes. The um, majority of this presentation is going to be OMG um, walking us through um, our first value engineering exercise, um, as well as TSK commit support. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to do is kind of level set the committee on the process. So this is being our first time really kind of working through um, an effort like this. Um, and, you know, this is really how our role has changed post referendum, post referendum as a building committee and really where we kind of, the rubber meets the road for us and we really start <laughs> evaluating and analyzing the project. So what you see here is um, a slide that kind of walks through where we stand right now, this moment, um, as far as both pre-referendum cost estimates and post-referendum cost estimates, and a little bit, of, we're going to talk you through a little bit about that timeline, what those numbers look like, and answer some of the questions I have in this document is how did we get from point A to point B, and how do we get from point B to point C? Does that make sense to everybody so far? So again, not going to be a lengthy conversation, but I think it will be a good level set for all of us. So. On the slide, you'll see there's that pre-referendum number, which is um, what we had available to us on May 20th of 2020, which was the PMT estimate um, that was uh, provided to us through TSKK. Uh, it was that 115000 or $115,000,000, excuse me, $600,000. Um, and remember, this is pre-referendum, and this is construction costs only. So remember, we're not looking at the total big project costs that we're all used to kind of dealing with at this point. We're narrowing our scope a little bit, just talking about um, construction costs only. So if you remember, that's really the number that was included in our budget when we went to reference. That makes sense to everybody so far? All right, so when we talked last time a little bit about kind of going out and doing estimation again, now that we have ONG on board, doing reconciliation of all those estimates and kind of reevaluating where we were to get. And so what we saw is a 12-1, ONG came forward with an estimate and again, did reconciliation with TSKP. Remember we said it was a 1% difference last time, so we were very close. Um, but what we ended up with was $124,975,000, which is significant, significant difference. So let's talk first about how did we get from that 115 million to the 124 million. And these were kind of the big cost drivers that were identified for us. So we looked first at something we talked about, we have been talking about for the past year, year and a half, escalation and what that means. Um, and some of the big items involved and, and that really made a difference in the overall cost. So you'll see there kind of detailed out structural, structural steel framing, steel decking, interior partitions, and some of the things that are, were required for our site were impacted by escalation among other things. But those were kind of the big hitters. And you can see kind of the escalation rates there we saw as 2020, which was refers back to that pre-referendum estimate. And then take a look at that 2021, right? So shows us very clearly 
that we, we're going to see some increases. And then that 2022 is a estimate or a projection, right? As far as what we think it's going to look like going into next year. So we're seeing a little bit of reduction, but still not where we would want it to be, certainly. So take into consideration that escalation plus, we really, um, it was required for this second estimate um, post referendum to do further delineation of site scope work. And in doing that, some additional costs came forward. And you can see there after we after we really dug into, we were looking at phasing and logistics, excavation, site walls, landscaping, civil and electrical utilities. There was an addition in cost there as well that was a little easier to identify once we had a better understanding of the overall scope. So that's really how we got from that 520 estimate to the 121 estimate. So those were kind of the big hitter heavy you know, cost drivers in that change in cost. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so as we said on 121 saying 124.9 is not where we need to be, um, we needed to then go and try to get us to where we needed to be for bucket. So the question now becomes, how do we get from 124 to our required budget of 150, right? So what you'll see now is our first exercise in value engineering that we're going to be walked through. This is not the last time we're going to do this. So you'll see at the very top, um, we will be doing this again, um, post design development and construction documents. So we'll go through the same process. And that's why it's important for you to understand the overall process, how this is gonna work and what the next steps are. So, the value engineering recommendations, as Richard was very cautious to say earlier, this is our job as a committee to go ahead and approve these. So it's important that we all understand what's included. These are recommendations of value engineering. And they're broken into these categories. And you'll hear much more about the shell, interior services, equipment and furnishings, and site work. So you'll see specific items underneath those categories that we're going to talk about tonight. And some things to consider as we move into this exercise. So First and foremost, when we're talking about these value engineering recommendations now and in the future, they should not impact educational programming. First and foremost, I think we've always said going in, I think we're all, all aligned around that, that that is where our focus should be, is we will not affect educational programming if obviously we can, we can help it, but that's obviously will be our priority. Um, these are based on the cost estimate at the time of the recommendation. So again, right now, this point in time, as always, this is something that's going to change over time. Um, important for everybody to understand the recommendations that you'll see in front of us and moving forward have been vetted by consultants if necessary. So it's not that it's somebody's own opinion on many of these things. It's with the consultant brought on board to help us um, evaluate some of these and identify opportunities for savings as well as end users. So, you know, a lot of people within the district or asked about what about these kind of things? What are the requirements around these? Is this okay? So I want everybody to feel comfortable that if there's an item on here that maybe you don't feel 100% confident about your knowledge around that item, we've asked experts and people to help us to evaluate those things. So something to keep in mind. Um, add alternates will be reevaluated at eight point for BE. So the add alternate list, which we've done a little bit of work on, will move forward with us. They don't go away, but they will be kind of categorized differently, as you see, and we'll adjust accordingly as we walk through the cost estimate and the final bill will be approved by the building committee. So it's important that you see this level of detail as a committee because you need to understand kind of the decisions that are being made because you will be asked to vote on it. You are not going to be asked to vote on this tonight. <laughs> so just so you know, I want everybody to be aware, it's our first time out. This is not, as I said, the last time we're going to do it, but the process is important. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to look through. You're going to get a better understanding of the documentation we're going to use and how the process works. Take your time over the next two weeks as after you have reviewed the schedule thoroughly. Go in and, and kind of get your bearings on, on these items. Questions? I'm going to ask that you forward any questions on to Kat related to these. We'll get answers to those so that we're prepared. And then again, in our January 5th meeting, we're, we are going to be asking for people to vote on approval 
of these items. Again, there will be discussion. We brought up promotion, there will be discussion so we can answer questions and adjust anything, but that's the process that we're going to follow. Does that make sense to everybody? I want everybody to be comfortable because this is this is important. This is why we're here um, and why we were selected to do this. So yes. All right, excellent. So we will keep um oh yep, yeah, yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, so the recommendations, as you see them, I, I don't think I was very clear on this. Again, Richard mentioned it earlier as well, but there was a design working group of a smaller group of people with kind of some specialized knowledge. Again, people from the district, some people from the building committee, um, people from the town, uh, obviously our professional partners were all involved that worked on these recommendations. Sam is part of his efforts in the school as well. So there was a, a group that's evaluated these recommendations and brought them forward to you. So I don't want you to think again that these were plucked out of the air. These were fully evaluated, put in front of, uh, you'll see some are rejected, some are you know, pending, approved. There's all sorts of statuses that we're gonna talk about as we move forward, but it's important to know that you know, there was a group of people that have looked at these already to provide a recommendation. Yes, Richard, you wanna Okay, excellent. So that's what I just want to make sure everybody's clear on. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put it right back over to ONG to kind of help walk us through the process. Great. So what we're going to put up on the screen next is the um, is, is our enhanced schematic design estimate. Um, this is just a summary of the estimate, the overall estimate. Uh, the estimate itself is probably made up of say 400 sheets of, of tape offs and, and a lot more detail. So this is going to be a very high level review of our um, of, of this estimate. Uh, again, schematic design estimate um, is going to be one of three estimates we provide for the project. When we do a schematic design estimate that we present, it's uh, that we completed now and that we present tonight. We'll also be doing one at the GD um, stage of the document development, as well as the CD stage. Um, so the, the value engineering, value management, um, scope alignment, some people call it, will be done at each of those three stages so that we keep the project project on budget. So uh, with our um, project cost summary here for the schematic design estimate, um, we break it down to a, a couple of different categories. Um, the first is the construction cost, and we break that down by, by site work, by abatement and demolition, uh, building construction, and then we have a line item in there um, for recommended reductions and alterations. And again, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail, but we are showing a dollar amount that we are carrying forward in order to balance the budget at this point. Um, we also break the, uh, the overall estimate down into um, a couple of different categories. Um, the first being the early enabling package, which is primarily site work. Um, that's the plan that the world presented at the last committee meeting. So we are showing those costs for that, um, that amount of work. Um, it is included in the overall high school cost, um, and that's the next column. So if you read down for the high school building, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the, of the page, you can see the total cost for the, for the high school building um, as a standalone. Uh, the next column over is the central office. Again, tracking those costs separately. It is, it is a separate, separate uh, state number, and we talked about earlier the different reimbursement rates. So those are costs that we do track throughout the course of the, of the project. Um, so again, the estimate itself is broken out down, are broken down by construction cost, um, the reimbursables, which is our is our fees, um, basically our staffing for the, for the project. Uh, we have a section called contingency. Uh, so there is uh, three separate contingencies we are carrying um, at this stage of the estimate. Um, the first is the design estimate contingency. And so we are carrying 7% at this stage. Um, basically that is for um, costs that we know will be encumbered um, as part of the project um, or as part of the documents, I should say. Um, and as the, the, the drawings themselves get further developed, that number actually reduces. So it, it's really there just to, it's an estimating tool basically to fill in all the blanks that maybe not necessarily drawn on the paper yet, but, but will have to be drawn. Okay. So right. it is a, it's a contingency that we do carry. At the end of the day, it does get rolled up into construction costs and, and disappears. Um, it's really, again, it's just a, a strategy in, in estimated. 
the next item was escalation. As, as Megan mentioned, um, that's one of the bigger factors of, of the cost increase from, from 2020 to today's estimate. Uh, we are carrying 6% now um, uh, per year, and actually we can show 5% because we are bidding this thing in October, part of the third quarter of 2022. And then there's the CMR contingency. Um, again, that contingency will remain within the project. You will see that from, from this estimate going forward um, at that same percentage. Um, just to step back real quick on the escalation, the, the day that we bid the project, that escalation goes to zero. So we're really going to look at real, you know, the day that we bid the project will be the real numbers, right? So if we did another takeoff or another estimate at that point, that, that line would be zero as well. Okay, those costs get rolled up into the overall construction costs. Uh, the next section is, is the CMPs. Again, that's the contractual uh, amount that was agreed to must be a part of our contract, as well as the CM bond and insurance. Um, so really the overall numbers that we're looking at, um, again, we have a 15 million, $115,600,000 budget for the project. Um, we're slightly, at this point, we're slightly under, we're about $94,000 under that value. Um, so typically in this, uh, at this time, we would recommend to the committee that we go on to the next stage. So we start the DD um, process. Uh, the project's basically on budget at this point, and we, and we move forward. Um, again, as, as, as mentioned earlier, um, there was quite a bit of, of value engineering scope alignment that was done uh, with the working group to try to bring this project um, back on, on budget, which was something that we were successful at and, and we were able to accomplish. Um, so the next, um, couple of pages here um, is going to reflect the items that we um, as a group uh, recommended um, be carried forward um, as a method of getting us back on budget. And what we had we had done um, was basically uh, listed a number of, of um, proposed value management items. And then we um, kind of established a, a cost for each of those items. Uh, and that's what you see is, is OG trade cost um, the column there at the old page. Um, and then we kind of looked at it um, on kind of splitting those costs up into a, different, a couple of different categories. Uh, the first was an alternate, meaning that the, the item itself, the VE item itself, could be accepted at this point to carry forward into the budget. But we want to reserve the, let's say reserve the right, because that's more of a legal term, but to reserve that, that um, pick an item so that we can put it back into the project at a later date. Okay. Um, we have a column that's marked approved. So we went through these um, e items and said, yeah, these are this is an easy one to accept. We'll put this in the, in the approved column. Uh, then we have another column um, marked pending, um, which is something that we did not use as a, a method of getting us back on budget, but it is still an item out there that Maybe just after further review, we could decide what it is, uh, something we should maybe move forward with and accept, or maybe not, and we should reject it. And then the last column is um, basically all the items that we get just flat out rejected, whether it's a, we thought it was a programming issue, somebody on the on the, um, the subcommittee really thought it was going to be affecting the, the performance of the building, um, or performance or affecting program of the building. So we just flat out rejected that and, and moved it into that column. So what we had done in order to balance the budget is we basically took the total of the alternate column and the total value of the approved column and used that within our in our estimate. So if you go back to our estimate where we have that recommended reductions and, and alternates, um, we carried 7.4 million roughly in, in deducts. Um, that is the amount that will be reflected in the alternate and the approved columns, the total for those, for those two columns. I just spoke for 10 minutes flat there, so if you have any questions on it, I'm going to set up to this point. Maybe, maybe you could add a couple yeah, of so comments. Please, so sure. uh, Mark just went through a very complicated chart. It's not that complicated, but it, there's a lot of information in there that has got, we've gone through many meetings with this working group that uh, that you described, um, and it's the recommendation. So even though Mark referred to a column that says approved that's only a recommended approval correct and rejected is a recommended rejected so i think 
to be clear, this building committee needs to accept the recommendations or move numbers around. If you want to now take an approved and move it to rejected, that is certainly possible. No, though, we have a limited amount of money, so it can't all be approved. Um, that's that's the task at hand. Pending. pending means that it is in the project. It's in the budget that uh, ONG has estimated. It could now stay pending going forward to the next level of design. Or this committee say, no, we can make a decision now. We're, we're going to reject it now. And if it's rejected, then you basically just uh, decreased the cost estimate. Right. So just, I think maybe, and this is a good, probably a good time just to use an example, just so that we get an understanding of how that works. So if, if you look on um, the first sheet under shell, um, item B10, so the eliminate roof screens at roof top mechanical units. And, and we move that to a pending item. So right now, the estimate itself um, includes the cost of those roof screens. So those haven't been taken on the project, they're still shown on the drawings, they're, they're part of the project. Um, as Richard mentioned, if we decide on January 5th that we don't need those roof screens, we could take that pending value and move it to the approved or the alternate columns and realize those savings within the estimate. Right. And it also could stay pending for a while. And the yes. reason why it may stay pending for a while is the roof screens may be a subject of discussion with the planning and zoning commission. Are they important or are they not important? I think we need to do some diagrams to show when you're at different vantage points around the site, would you be able to see the mechanical equipment or not? And so without that kind of demonstration, it would be difficult for the Planning and Zoning Commission to say, yeah, we can eliminate the screen. So that's why it may, this item may, in particular, may stay pending until after we get through the planning. And a majority of the pending, I think all of the pending items are still pending because they need further review before a decision can be made. Correct. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. So maybe we can jump to another item. Sure. So that was an example of a pending item. So, right. so if you want to move to a. Yeah. Can we go to another pending item? Um, sure. Oh, before we continue, you will note that um, the the description is divided into three categories. We have shell, interiors, services, equipment and furnishings, and site work. So if you jump to equipment and furnishings, specifically line item E6, the recommendation was defer the culinary arts lab kitchen equipment. What do we mean by that? Well, during the discussions with the working group, we said, we don't have a, a director of the culinary lab yet. We're not sure exactly what kinds of equipment may be necessary for that curriculum. You certainly are vacating the existing building. Perhaps there's equipment that can be reused in the culinary lab once we have a conversation with who the future director might be of that lab. That's going to take quite a bit of effort. We're going to have to investigate what kinds of food service equipment may be reused in the culinary lab that may be made part of the curriculum. So we decided we can't make that decision yet. Let's keep that idea as a pending possibility. And that's why it's still in the budget that ONG has provided. That still needs further steps. Um, let's, let's look at an example. Um, Rejected item. Under services, item D4, reduce the generator to 175 kilowatt to support only certain items. Well, it became pretty evident <laughs> when we were having these meetings that well, what are we doing? We, we're not gonna we're not gonna reduce the size of the generator. We need to be able to provide a facility that provides some emergency services, warming shelter, shelter, cooling shelter. So that's why that was a rejected item. At least the working group recommended that that be rejected. So right now we have a full-size generator. Uh, 
we will continue in the next phase of design to look at we could if we could reduce the capacity of that generator still that's why you said we're going to go through this again yeah. for example one of the ideas that we talked about was well do we need to have the capacity to serve the entire building maybe not maybe you need the capacity to serve only the ground floor the auditorium, the kitchen, the gymnasium, for those places of assembly that you might have in an emergency situation, and maybe only the classrooms on the ground floor, because you could use those as support spaces as well. But you may not need the upper classrooms on the second and third floor to be serviced by the emergency generator. So this item may be revisited in, when we get through design development. Those are a couple of examples. Um. I'd just like to make a comment about the culinary arts. Sure. As someone who is actually the department supervisor of the culinary arts program. Oh, we should be talking to you about it. <laughs> I, I am available. Okay. Because, um, just from experience, you know, we have gone through construction and now we are dealing with the aftermath yeah. of needing upgrades. Yeah. Of, um, we just was in a meeting about it of um, panel boards, electrical panel boards mm -hmm. to even just service um, kitchen and mixtures or uh, sure. air fryers. Sure. And those are your lower end appliances. Um, but I would be cautious of eliminating that, thinking moving forward, it might cost the district more money and cause more havoc onto a program right. when students are not going to be able to use the equipment that they need to join productions. Right. So you raise a good point because it's not just the equipment, it's also service to that equipment, whether it's hoods. Power, plumbing. Be, be cautious about um, about any kind of cuts in the culinary area. Yeah, yeah and we've had a few estimates that came back earlier, really triple, just to add a commercial plug yep. to it. Yeah. So just um, I'm going through it myself, and as I'm looking at this number, we may be better off adding now than to pay for it. Yeah. I, I think we got our consultant for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do have a food service consultant. Yes. But we also have someone who could really? speak part of this yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, let's see if there's a couple of other things I can point out as an example. Um, Maybe an example of an alternate. Oh, okay, let's let's jump to catwalks in the auditorium. That's C9. C9. What? C8. Uh, so we have an idea that reducing one catwalk in the auditorium may be possible. So we've had, we do have a, a theater consultant that's part of the team. He's been working with the theater folks um, in the school. And uh, we had started out with, in the initial design concept, we had started out with two catwalks over the seating area as lighting positions. And we had a number of catwalks above the stage. Uh, and now the notion here is that we really don't need two catwalks above the seating area, that we really only need one lighting position. So there could be uh, some savings there. That's, that's an example. But the decision or the recommendation was made, let's put that in the alternate column. So if bidding is favorable, Maybe we could reconsider putting that back in. In fact, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine alternates uh, at the moment. I've seen 14 or 15 alternates on a project that we did recently. Uh, and in the end, they were able to afford all of the alternates. And that was at the beginning of this year. I mean, this was not that long ago. Uh, even though we were in COVID, it was such a competitive uh, market that everybody was bidding very, very competitively. So is that going to be the market next year, Jeff? Well, well, sorry. Mark, well, you tell me. <laughs> is that going to be the market next year? Um, you the, the estimate is not based on that, but, 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 that, yeah. but we are hoping for a, a better yeah, which is, climate, uh, but this goes back to that escalation figure that Meg had come before. I think the consensus on your people's part 
and the other independent estimator we brought in PNNC was if we should carry six percent. Probably that's correct. That's year, the year, yes. Right. Whereas in the beginning of COVID, or even before COVID, we were carrying four percent. Now, now we're being a little bit more conservative. Yeah, that's why the alternates work well because you you get the benefit of the time at the time. So you include these as, as alternates. They're part of the design. They're already there. They're they're they are designed right. Everything, all the materials selected, just picked out. Right. And it's just a matter at that time of on bid day and, and looking at the numbers and seeing whether you could afford that an alternate or maybe a combination of alternates to accept at that point. Right. You should opportunity to prioritize. If you ask the world, we should stay under ten, right? <laughs> it, it's going to take a while for you to digest this. Yeah. Uh, again, I, you know, it's like I said, I don't think we're expecting you to take any action on it tonight. So I, I think going forward over the next couple of weeks, you're, you would welcome questions. From Absolutely. That, so that's what we wanted to make sure, as I said, especially our first um, time to exercise. We wanted to make sure everybody understood. Does it does it make sense? Kind of the process, the premise of how things, and, and this will be. It's a nice tool. I think it's a great tool for us that you, know, you can move things from column to column. Um, you know, and, and that was kind of the process that we went through to kind of get us to that one fifteen, right. which was the ultimate goal. So I hope this makes sense to everybody. What I think I'm, my ask is uh, the committee, especially the voting members, but even now voting members are looking for your input as well. Is take some time, go through these line items. Now, I fully understand there's going to be things on here that some people are going to be, have a lot of knowledge on and others that you might not. And that's okay. That's why we are the team that we are. Right. And why we have professionals um, and people helping us and end users and consultants. So we, we have a large team. I don't want you to think that everything relies on your shoulders for every one of these decisions. This is a lot of people helping us with this information. Um, so look at each one of these line items specifically, um, as we mentioned, it's the alternates and the approved that are affecting the, the overall estimate. So just remember that as you're looking at it, but also be aware of what's in that pending, just so you know, so you, you, you have an idea of what we're talking about. And, you know, obviously take a look at the rejected too. You can see, and there's also that notes for the comments column as well. So we uh, added some additional comments in there to kind of help uh, give a very quick or brief description as to why um, the action was taken on that particular item. So hopefully that will help as well, but take some time, look through these. The moment you have a question, open up an email, jot it in there, it doesn't have to be perfect, anything you can think of, and then poor Kat, I'm gonna say, sit <laughs> about the cat, because she'll help coordinate who we go to. Um, to get answers for people. So I don't want you to feel in don't no question is off limits or don't feel like you can't ask it. We want everybody to ask the question so that we feel comfortable that we're prepared when we come back in January that you have the knowledge you need to make an informed vote. And we'll we'll likely share the questions I want to ask to everybody. So Maybe we do that as a Google Doc. How does how do people feel about that? If we did a Google Doc link and then because you might People might have the same question. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that probably makes most sense, yeah. Kat. That, so maybe what we'll do is send out a link to the committee after the fact, after the meeting, and just say anything you can think of popping in here. And then that way we can track. Yeah. And also coordinate, making sure each and every one are answered. But then at least everybody right. yeah. can just jump into the same document and see all the questions that they've already been. Yeah. 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 I mean, you might get your question answered even before you put it in. If that's the case. Is that? Does that work? Or, yeah, when they have people ask, just one. Yeah, start. go ahead. Yeah, sure. C13, reducing the number of um, upper petitions into a classroom, because that is going to be talking about class size uh, classrooms. Um, what does that mean? Are you taking good space and no longer having the ability to divide it by sections? Okay. So the ed specs call for, I believe, uh, six. Six. six operable partitions in the classroom. <laughs> So each, each learning community has has two classrooms that can be combined um, by, by, by a partition, right? Yeah, by yeah. opening up partition. So there were six such partitions indicated in the uh, bed specs. You really need six, is the question being asked. 
I can't, I'm, I'm saying we, but it came, it came from a number of people. Other people have uh, suggestions, um, not just us. So at the moment it's pending, which means that it, we still have six. Correct. Six, six, six are still in the project. Right, we haven't, we haven't taken those out. But we could save some money if we don't do six. Okay, so that's conversation that they're having. Okay, that just wanted to understand, yeah. you know, what that meant in terms of classroom sizes or yeah. classroom. Yeah. So, so not on the list are things that I brought up that were shot down immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, things like reducing square footage, for example. We have not reduced square footage. That's important to point out. Okay. Um, this is a very manageable list, I believe. This is not unusual. Every project goes through this process. Especially at, especially at this level, right? right. I mean, especially at the schematic design level. Right. Uh, it, it's it's very, very typical what we, what we see. Yeah, so I, I'm pleased with where we are. Uh, you, will, you will need to, as soon as you get over this learning curve here, I think you'll be pleased as well. We have not, we have not compromised quality. We have not compromised the, the program. I'm sorry, go ahead. But I do have a question about, I want to make sure I'm understanding the alternate column and what's that. We already, we came into this process with alternates already, correct? So those are reflected here. It supersedes it, right? This Some of them. Yeah. Yeah, there's actually, in addition to? There, there's a few, I, if I remember this correctly, and I think what we need to do is, um, there are some that were included in the um, estimate that we are working with here and some that weren't. We've figured that part out, yep. but I think there's a few we need to kind of track off to the side that we talked about, which was that 500,000 reduction, remember, pre-referendum, yep. where we made some adjustments. Um, so they'll get tracked separately. They do not affect the estimate. All of that has been reconciled. So nothing, there's those no items will be managed, no right? but they don't impact the overall cost at this point. So we'll indicate those separately, though, that's so that we okay. don't lose them as a tracking item. As an alternate, they're still considered in the project. Just be, they're not considered in the budget. So, that on midday, we would have those opportunities to say whatever we want to do. Yeah, uh, well, to, to be honest, an alternate means it's, it's uh, if bidding is bad, right? You're not getting, you're not right. getting the alternates, right? Yes, correct. You're, 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 you're not, not getting, getting it day one. It's you're not getting, or you're not getting it on day one. That's a better clarification. Huh. So typically, <laughs> you have when that you bid the project, you have a uh, expiration date on the alternate because at some point you have to pull the trigger and say, "Look, we're going to build this this wall a certain way." And once you're in the process, it's too late to have you don't have that option anymore. Right. But some things like finishes, you may wait until much later in the project before deciding on, let's say, the porcelain tile exam example. So we have porcelain tile versus vinyl. That's one of the alternates here. That's that's an alternate you can carry uh, for a longer period. Right, for further into the project. You may find you have money contingents. That's correct. Good point. So you saw some contingencies identified by Mark. Know that there's an owner's contingency as well, right? That's above and beyond this construction budget. So if when you're constructing the building, you decide, hey, look, you know, the bedding climate looks good, more manageable, and uh, things are going smoothly, not a lot of surprises. You may decide, let's release some contingency, owner's contingency, uh, to buy some of the owner. So, anecdotally, and just as far as the industry measure, where do we think we fell? Like, what, were, what did we say? Seven, this is about, it represents about 7% of the overall. But do we remember what the number? What that that, over? Yeah. Yeah, around 7%. Yeah, around 7%. In other projects that we're seeing that are going to bid around the same time, uh, different types of construction, different types of things, 20, 28%, I just saw 20%. Large, large numbers. I, am I talking out of turn? Or, right? So, Feeling good about seven percent. Yeah, this is definitely on the manageable, and that's why it really didn't take us very long to put the list together and and get the project back back on track as far as the budget goes. 
or the ship to begin with that you can go through these items and so like the Wendy's example of the question that to those are the kind of questions any of those things pop them in the spreadsheet we'll get answers no we'll kind of that's probably gonna be a rolling process that we can do over the next couple of weeks so if you go in you might see some answers to some things as we get them and we'll pop them in there but we'll make sure all that stuff is answered prior to our January 5th meeting so that everybody has everything they need uh, when we actually talk about. So, can I ask a question about? Yep. So, is the plan to try to get these approved at the January 15th? Yes. Okay. Because they do need time to incorporate them into the next four or so. Yes. Okay. So, Laurel is going to keep us honest on, this, on, <laughs> love, on the schedule to say, what's the end thing? And that's what you said. <laughs> so, we need to, which I get that completely. So, again, that's why we're being cautious here. We want to make, make sure people have time. Right. Um, hopefully, again, I know it's a tough time of year to be doing this, but if you can take some time, you know, here and there to kind of walk through this, look through this, view, get a, a good, deep understanding, ask questions, um, I think we can do that. I think it's reasonable for us to, to put that vote forward on the fence so that we remain on schedule and give you guys the time to be responding. Other team meeting prior to January 5th, the small committee. I don't know what you said, right? Are we? I don't. We are scheduled to meet next week. I think the intent was to cancel that meeting yeah. um, because the work has really centered around finalizing these recommendations to bring to the committee. And so that group, that working group, that working group is, yeah. is comfortable so, with what, what's being presented tonight. So it's the recommendation of the working group to the full committee that these are the recommendations coming out of those, oh, okay. those discussions. So, you know, there was probably three or four weeks of meetings and meetings and discussions around a lot of these topics like Richard said there's items that didn't even make the list um, you know from a programming perspective and going through so once we finally got the reconciliation that, that reconciled cost estimate that's where we really do what we had but I think you know to Kathy you and your team's credit defending programming um, uh, you, you know as this is the last place we're going to look um, I think you know forced our group to kind of really focus uh, in a you know in a building specific physical building a specific direction. Um, so yeah, that was, yeah, it was good. I think everybody was uh, open and honest and transparent through the process. So I think it's been a great uh, great process to get to where we are today. So a lot of lot of work has gone into it. So I think we left it with OG. I mean, are you finished with your? Uh, yeah, unless there's any other questions regarding the estimate itself or, um, or the process there that we're going through. So. Are we comfortable for right now? As I said, we want to use some time to look through the careful way. Yeah, Mick, I just wonder if we should mention that there is one other um, change that has been made to the project that I don't think is included in the um, in this particular schedule and it's a it's a significant dollar saving things it it's the um, the, the change from the uh, the terracotta siding to the brick and again if you're not in that working group, I don't know that that would be drawn. Am, am I right, or is that is that articulated in here? No, it's not articulated in here because it, it never made the list. And these were the, that was one of the items that Richard was referring to. So the, I don't know if you remember way back. It was actually a meeting we had. I think in the library. Uh, when right we after the meeting, it was right after the meeting. Then meeting right after the first meeting, right after the vote. Right, right. right there, so mm -hmm. um, when we talked about schematic design, one of the things that was presented as a possibility to us was a um, terracotta exterior versus a brick. It was, a terracotta, it was a terracotta rain screen. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. Sorry. For <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and and so there's question to that. It was estimated out um, as a for a cost, um, and based on that estimate and based on feedback on what we heard from community and feel and all sorts of things. It was not um, included in the estimate. 
Correct. So you will not see it. It's not included at all in here. Um, but to Michael's Correct. point, in case like that's something that pops in your head, of like, hey, what about that thing? Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask those questions too. Hey, I remember us talking about this. Is that in here or isn't it? Yep. It gets, you know, I mean, it, we all have gone through this and as we've looked at these estimates, it's been multiple estimates, long time frame, lots of items. Yep. So um, I think by this point is, is um, important to say like anything like that that kind of pops in your head, please put it in there and then we can confirm and say yes, no, um, and make sure it's clear. That's correct. So uh, and again, Michael, it's a good question. Uh, this estimate anticipates brick. Correct. On the exterior. And that was corrected during one of the reconciliation meetings we had with you, right. with your estimator, and, and we all got on the same page. So we made that correction, um, and it is part of the okay. Thank you, Michael. Another good example of a good question. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we got a lot of meetings, a lot of conversations, so feel free to put all those in the spreadsheet. Okay, how's, how's everybody feeling about it? Make sense? Yes? You're one of those teachers that assigns homework over the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it at a work meeting today, too. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I just can't. Like, people are, I'm going to like, it seems like we're going right up to the edge this year. Right? <laughs> at least we didn't do an RFP, right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that out of the way. Yes, we have all that for executive session. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Any other further questions or anything else for OD? Thank you very much for stepping us through that. For schedule process everything else thank you Mr. michael for the for the information and feedback more to come more conversation but i think everybody's clear on what our next steps are there um all right we're going to go through some of our last um reports and then we have some new business items which is going to require us to go into executive session uh so we do have some more work to do tonight before we go on our break um but very quickly let's go into communication subcommittee report uh, the, there was no meeting uh, tonight that was canceled, so the next meeting would be on January 5th prior to our home committee meeting. The only update would be that uh, the newsletters were delivered to homes this week. So um, we sent out that newsletter with updates and then it was received this week. Okay, um, let's see. Professional partnerships subcommittee report anything beyond what we're going to go through. Um, yeah. Just an update so. on negotiations with OMG for the contract. We are very, very close. Um, Mark and I have been meeting with um, Mark and Aaron from OMG to finalize that. Um, it, it should, I would anticipate, you know, in the near, very near future that we, we get that signed and executed and, and ready to go. Um, Professional partnerships, you will see some items on this agenda after we come out of executive session and select a finalist for the commissioning agent and for the engineering review services. Um, professional partnership normally does the contracting aspect of this. I will note that we did include <coughs> contracts as part of our initial RFQ with the understanding that those would be signed and approved by the selected finalists. So there really isn't going to be that much work for the professional partnership, but if needed, they would be the ones to, to finalize that. Okay, and final report is financial. I know we didn't have a financial report included in our agenda packet. Yep, the only updates for the financial report, um, there is one new fee under, um, what is the category called? Expenses from a Windows building committee. It's the last item, $291 for you. That was just the legal notice that we had to publish in the paper for professional engineering review services. I have not received the bill for the commissioning agent one. Um, and then the only other expense down here is under sustained communication plan, Tall Timbers Marketing. There's an invoice on today's agenda that is for the preparation and distribution of the newsletter. Uh, that is uh, reflected in here as well. So total on hand, again, for that separate account budget that we have, again, our professional partners fees are no longer coming out of that. So it's really just uh, communications that would be coming out. That's $100,380.95 on hand. Any questions on that? And then the only other update we have that invoice tracking one, there are invoices from TSKP on today's agenda. 
So that English tracking sheet has been updated as well. All right, so we are going to then move right into new business. Um, I don't want to be on top of those combined meetings. We can start that in the year. Oh, yeah. They can set, yeah, to make sure, as can you remember, we talked, I think, last time about, you know, consolidating our approval of invoices, invoices but we'll start that starting in January um, as we move forward. So we have some uh, new business invoices to approve here. Uh, so can I get a motion to approve the attached invoice from Tall Timbers Marketing in the amount of four thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars? So moved. I need a second. Second. <laughs> All right. All in. Oh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Approved. Next item G two. To approve the attached invoice from TSKP Studio in the amount of two hundred ninety-two thousand eight hundred dollars. Motion to approve. Any discussion? So just a note: this invoice is for professional services rendered regarding the project of high school design, rendered through November twenty twenty-one. Uh, favor. Aye. All right. Opposed. Aye. January is not dead. You can take. You can vote. All right, that is uh, unanimously approved. We will move on to G3. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the attached invoice from TSKP Studio in the amount of $12,200? Motion to approve. Second. All right, discussion. So this is for professional services regarding the central office locker room renovation rendered for November 2021. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> 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 like the <laughs> <out of there. laughs> All right, unanimously approved. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah, three. Yeah. Okay, so um, our next order of business is actually uh, to move into executive session. So can I get a motion to review, to move to executive session to review and discuss the RFP responses for commissioning services and professional engineering services in accordance with the Connecticut General Statute as listed in our agenda? Motion. Discussion. So again, as we mentioned, this is to review and discuss RFP responses for commissioning services and professional engineering services. Um, the attendance in the executive session shall be limited to voting and non-voting members of the Farm High School Building Committee, representatives from TSKB Studio, representatives from Construction Solutions Group, and representatives from ONG Industries. Um, and we will cut out, obviously, executive session to go into approval of the motion, and that shall be by a two-thirds vote. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. We are unanimously approved for executive session. Um, you want to go in now or wait for this? I think we up? have to um, do some. Right now, there is a separate executive session uh, wow. Zoom link that we will have to set up. We have to keep the meeting running for the motion that we have. So okay. you can give us a few minutes for yeah. a Yeah, and just let me know at what point. At one time. Yeah. Well, we'll make the motion now at 8.15. Okay. All right. So we will go into executive session as of 8.15. Yep. Perfect. Go from that. Okay.
Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Um, so now that we did come out of executive session as of 9.01. Um, first, I would like to ask for a motion to table items G5 and G6 until the January 5th meeting. Motion to table G5 and G6 until the January 5th meeting. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, unanimously approved. Uh, next up is could I have a motion to select diversified technology consultants as the finalist for professional engineering services? Motion. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, approved. And then can I have a motion to authorize the town manager of professional partnership subcommittee to negotiate and sign a contract with diversified technology consultants for professional engineering services? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And the first. Excellent. So that was uh, our last item in new business. So before I ask for a motion for adjournment, just um, things very quickly. Uh, just a reminder that we, for our uh, previous conversations on uh, meeting times, we will start at five o'clock. 
um, in the new year. Um, format will be the same, obviously, Zoom will be available. Um, so that shouldn't be any different. Do a reminder to the communication subcommittee though, that again, that adjusts our schedule for that. So the start time for that meeting is four o'clock. Um, same thing, it will be virtual, available to people. And I myself like in the car on the way to our five o'clock meeting, but that's okay. We'll, we'll manage through that as we go through the process. Um, so that was kind of our housekeeping. But um, before adjourn it, just happy holidays, everybody. Thank you very much for the time, the effort, um, the commitment as always. Can't thank you all enough. Um, it was so far so good. I know tonight was a lot to go through, um, but I think you made really good progress. Um, and I, you know, I'm really looking forward to 2022. Looking forward, big year for us, 2022. It's what we've finally been waiting for. So the year is here. But again, safe, healthy, happy holidays with friends and family uh, to everyone. And you know, we will see everybody in the new year. All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion. Second. Motion. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. We'll turn at 9.05 this evening. Thank you very much. Well done.